What is going on, you crusty f***ing wooks? Welcome back to the channel. Come on in, sit on down, take yourself a rest. Uh, if it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified every time we drop little goodies, little videos such as this. You know, today we're doing something really, really interesting, right? What we're doing is we're ranking every studio album by the Grateful Dead. Now, there are a few live albums that are technically considered like studio releases, kinda. You know what I mean? Like your Reckoning, your Europe 72, your Live Dead, your Skull and Roses. Those are still gonna be considered throughout this process, right? So there's 17 albums. I almost said 13. There's 17 of them. Okay, but before we get into it, I'm Davey. As always, I'm your Grateful Daddy. I'm your Sherpa, the Mountain of the Grateful Dead. I'm a not Jerry. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I, you know, I play this music for a living and I teach guitar lessons and stuff here on the channel. Uh, and speaking of that, this episode is brought to you by me, baby, and the Golden Road Guitar Course. You can pick it up for 130 bucks. You send it to my Venmo or my PayPal and I shoot it over to you. It is a full 4K video guitar course with charts and backing tracks and everything you need. I'll send over to you in a little Dropbox link. It's great, right? Uh, I've got my little pen here. I've got a bunch of notes because this this actually was fucking hard. This was hard to do. I thought, you know, when I when I thought about it, because I recently, you know, not too long ago, I did this video right here. Deadheads are toxic, and it's a good little TED talk. This isn't quite a TED talk. This is more of an opinion piece, right? Because this is my fucking opinion. So go ahead and take your panties all the way out of your butt crack, because I'm definitely not gonna rank these the way that you would have, right? I've got my own reasons. That's why I've got these notes. That's why it took me three days to compile all this shit to figure it out. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from 17, right? We're gonna start from my lowest rated one all the way to my number one. And then we're gonna do the art. We're gonna, so that's a completely different kind of like, uh, it's a completely different list, right? So you've got my top albums, my 17, like what what order I would put them in, and then you've got like how I would judge the art. Uh, so I, I think that this should be fucking interesting, but again, like don't, you know, let me know in the comments what your, your list would be uh, instead of just jumping down my throat for why I didn't put your favorite album first, right? Because I don't care. I don't give a fuck, honestly. Why would I? This is my opinion. This is how I feel. And maybe you guys will get like a better idea of like who I am as a person by the way I order them, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna hop on into it. We're gonna we're gonna get in our little our little further bus and we're gonna start we're gonna start going down the old highway. We're gonna ramble on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So coming in at number seventeen. Like I told. about this already i know a lot of people are like how could you put europe 72 at the last bit i mean it's just it's just the way it is as far as like the songs go and everything like i love it for it being one of those live albums but a lot of these songs they would end up playing what i consider better versions of them that's the way it kind of goes with these these live ones that they put out so a lot of these songs didn't get like a studio release right like like he's gone uh one more saturday night was on you know bob weir's album but then you've got songs like jack straw brown eyed women ramble on rose and uh tennessee jet and being from tennessee tennessee jet is not one of my favorite songs because being in tennessee people for some reason love that song, even though it's like, why would you play that song while you're in Tennessee? You don't play that song while you're in Tennessee. You play that song out of Tennessee. It's about going back to Tennessee. It's not about being in Tennessee. You know what I'm saying? So but dead bands that are in Tennessee, don't play Tennessee, Jed. It's weird. It's weird. Don't do that. It's, it's masturbatory. Some of my favorite songs are on that album because, again, I love Brown Eyed Women. I love Ramble on Rose. I love He's Gone. Uh, and there's, there's, you know, there's some, some... There's some good pig pen stuff on there, but again, that's it's just got to kind of go at the bottom of my list because there are so many shows out there. Since these aren't album versions, right? This is technically an album, but these aren't album versions, so it's hard for me to give it like that kind of credence because there are so much better live shows with these songs, right? It's an amazing like point in time, and that's kind of like what these albums are, right? Because of course you're gonna hear uh, these great renditions live because they were a live band. The studio versions always are just kind of like a pin. 
it's like it's a moment in time. It's enough for them to be like, okay, this is down, move on to the next thing, because they're they're obviously gonna play it live, unless it's like a, you know, a money money or like a but you're doing that rag because they, they there are some songs they only played once or twice or just a few times throughout a year that was number 17 right we got a lot more to go this is gonna be a long video right because we still got to do the art on them too so europe 72 check that off the list at number 17 number 16 coming in here we go And, I mean, you guys probably kind of saw this coming. Like, In the Dark, of course, is going to be a little bit lower down just because, like, the, the 80s stuff, it's hard for that to kind of connect with people, right? They're like, this is the touch heads. This is where the touch heads come in. And and really for me, like, because I love Touch of Grey. I love that song. Call, call it whatever you want. I think it's a great song. It has, like, the same fucking chord progression as Ruben and Charisse. So I've always really enjoyed that, that it's, like, one of the, you could play those songs. They're kind of like sister songs almost. Uh, I've always loved the I, We Will Get By, I Will Survive. It's I, uplifting, triumphant. Love that. It's also got Hell in a Bucket on it. Love that music video. Love the music video for both of them. This was really when they got you know, the the commercial success that they were trying to do with fucking, what was it, Shakedown Street? Yeah, they, they were trying to do it with Shakedown Street. That was what they tried to do, and this was like, that was 78, and then this was in 87, so almost 10 years to get what they wanted. Um, but it, I, I also love a West LA Fadeaway. That's always one of my favorite songs. I play that song all the time, and you gotta give a shout out to Throwing Stones, right? The fucking, what do you... What do your parents think of my protest songs? What do your parents think about your protest songs? What do your parents think about my protest songs, Mr. Time Magazine? It is, it's a protest song through and through, right? Um, so in the dark, you know, like I, this is in the Brent era. I love Brent to death, especially during the live shows. Oh, his, 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 his songs that were on the albums are never really my favorite. I don't know who's like a Brent head that's like, I fucking love. The Brent songs. You know, I love Tons of Steel. Um, I I just, like, it's hard for me to connect with, like, because, you know, I want to be a dad, but I'm not a dad yet. And a lot of his songs are about his daughter, which I get. Love your kid, man. I'm all about it. But also, you, you got your you got your middling in my dead. You're middling in my in my dead music, you know. They, they could have done more work to try to, like, tailor it to the sound. But I guess that's where the sound was going, you know. it's This is hard. It's hard to fucking pass judgment when, like, I'm trying not to be judgmental, but here we, here we are, here we are being divisive. I'm just saying shit about Brent Midland when he's pe a lot of people's favorite keyboardist, and I love him, but like his his piano sound sounded like trash, just straight up. It sounded like a Fisher Price toy piano. I will play two two examples right here to show you the fucking di like. There's not a difference. It is the same. You cannot tell me different. Okay, so moving on, we are going to now move on to our number 15 spot, and it is. All right, so, you know, Built to Last, it is the last the last studio album they ever put out. I don't really count the one that came out after Jerry died. I don't count it, even though it's got some great tunes on it. Um, but so like my, my kind of like, and, and I'm also throughout these, I'm sorry, I'm doing it in the third one. I should have done this at the beginning of the video. Uh, I'm going to give you some of my highlights. And like, if I have like a song that I really don't like, I'm going to comment on it. Right. So on this one, I love foolish heart. That's a great song. These, these songs. So like foolish heart and built to last and standing on the moon. They feel like my dad's talking to me. I was really close to my dad. That's dad. My dad. Uh, he died in 2014, almost 10 years now. Um, he was, he was my best friend and, you know, like a lot of the times when somebody passes, all you have left are like the words they've given you or like pictures or whatever. Um, but really it's like, I hear his voice all the time. I hear him talking to me and, you know, Jerry is kind of like a surrogate dad for a lot of us out there, right? A lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of these road kids, we, that's like Jerry's like that father figure, right? Those words are kind of that fill that void, you know, and for me, Foolish Heart and Built to Last, those definitely have those kind of like, there are times when you can beckon, there are times when you must call. You can take a lot of reckoning, but you can't take it all. It's like, yeah, thank you. Thank you, dads, you know. Um, also on there, I love Just a Little Light. Just a Little Light's a great Brent song. See, I can be nice to Brent, right? Love you, Brent. 
give him a little kiss on the cheek. Uh, and also, fucking Picasso Moon is a rockin' fucking song. No matter what you say, that song. Love it. It's one of my. I love that riff. It's fucking incredible. So you know, it, it, again, this list has been really hard to do, but I've done it and. Again, I want you to tell me yours in the comments below. So now we're moving on to number 14, and this one is definitely going to piss people off. I know that this one's going to hurt you, but here we go. All right, fucking, all right, calm down. Loosen your butthole. It's tight. I want you to loosen it. Open it up, all right? So just hear me out. I know Oxamoxua is some people's favorite albums because it's very like it's it's one of those albums that's you know it's pretty perfect it's pretty perfect i can't to, to me and this came out in 69 right nice <laughs> same year as live dead but so to me this i i called this refined psychedelia because there, there are some albums that are more like primal or primordial psychedelia, like Anthem of the Sun, and this is what comes after Anthem of the Sun. So to me, this is like them taking that like chaos and kind of reining it in a little bit. I love everybody loves Saint Stephen. It's a great jam vehicle, right? Especially when they started like adding it together with like Not Fade Away. So it, in the eleven, it's it's beautiful, and we're gonna talk about that when we get to Live Dead a little bit. But I, it, it's it's a great song. I, I love that the dead has this, there, there's an era of the dead because their, their words are timeless. And thank you, Robert Hunter. And, and thank you, John Barlow, for those words. The Robert Hunter stuff has this almost kind of like Canterbury Tales feel. It's like this, this past that never happened. And you notice that a lot with the band as well. Their, their, their songs seem to, seem to take place in, a hist in history, but not our history. And it's like this weird melding, almost kind of like the the gunslinger, like Stephen King. There's like this futuristic Wild West also adding in like this Ren Faire, medieval type era stuff, minstrel running through the woods type thing. And I've always loved that part of it because it's like out of time. It is this, it is this mystical, magical, you'd run into fucking Merlin or King Arthur, but also there's fucking cowboys and space aliens. It's that's that's what I get, right? And that's what I love about it. Um, you've also got songs on here like Dupree's Diamond Blues. Love that song. It's about pussy. I don't know if you know that, but Jelly Roll means pussy. Everybody loves that. Um, you've got the, the fucking crazy songs like Rosemary and What's Become of the Baby. And I, I love that shit. So that, to me, like, that's that. It's, it's, they're almost Lynchian. Right, they're almost like a David Lynch movie or a Stanley Kubrick movie. It's just like it's literally just like fucking candy. They also seem to kind of like take this dark turn. That was one thing I always loved about the Dead's music that it it wasn't afraid to face you with death. And I would love to do another one of these where like I, you know, I either like rank like the happiest Dead tunes and the saddest ones, like the ones about death and stuff. Uh, I would love to do that. So, you know, Rosemary, What's Become of the Baby, Mountains of the Moon, almost, so Mountains of the Moon kind of like bridges that gap, right, between the the songs that are more rooted and like kind of grounded, like with like an actual like flow to them and chord progression and stuff. And then Mountains of the Moon kind of leads you over into that What's Become of the Baby, Rosemary, where it's just kind of like loose and ethereal. And um, to me, What's Become of the Baby and Rosemary also kind of like lead into where things were gonna go further down the line, especially like with Blues for Allah, the song Blues for Allah, you can kind of feel that where it just kind of like shifted more and went a little bit more ancient in a different way. Uh, you know, China Cat Sunflowers on there. Love that doing that rag, baby. That's that it, psych, psychedelic as hell. It's got DMT in it, right? Rum drinking demon at tea. You're basically saying it. it's a little subliminal thing, right? They were all about witchcraft. They loved it. They were called the warlocks, right? So that's just how that goes. And I love that you like rounded out the whole thing with Cosmic Charlie. Now again, China Cat Sunflower is a great jam vehicle. They started doing it late in the, you know, they kept on doing it and they would pair it with I Know You Writer. And I love that. I love that combo. It's fucking perfect. You know, you might be upset with me that Oxamox was way down the list, but I don't, you know, whatever. Not here to please you. You're gonna have a good time, make stupid YouTube videos, right? So, moving on to our number 13 spot. Alright, Skull and Roses, right? 
So now I know some people might agree with this one and some people might not. And that's, again, it's okay. This is my opinion. Don't, don't worry about me. Don't care about what I say. I'm just a dude. Don't even, don't even think about it. But I, you know, this was 71. And this is another one of those, those live albums that they basically released as like a way to like get some of those songs permanently down. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of these songs. What I love is that Phil wanted to call this skull fuck. Isn't that great? That he wanted to call this album Skullfuck. Love it. Love Phil. Uh, you've got songs like Bertha, Big Railroad Blues, Mama Tried, which is a great cover that they did. Playing in the band. Mwah. Playing in the band is fucking, mwah, it's exquisite. That song is in 10. They used to call it the main 10. I know I did a lesson on this one and I've done a backing track on it, but it is so odd to play in 10. Um, and I always thought it was hilarious that Bob would just straight up count to 10 as the count off for the song. He'd go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then he would go into it. Super weird and unnecessary. You can just do a four count and just know that you're starting on the one of the five or ten that you're going to be counting it in. It's not that ridiculous. It's weird. It's just funny to me. Um, and it's an amazing jam vehicle. Like, you can go into so many different songs through that jam that's in there because you can stay in D and you could, um, I, I always love going into playing in the band from like the midpoint of Terrapin Station instead of continuing on and going through to like at a siding. And just at the end of Terrapin Station when you hit that big D after the, the big D. <laughs> you said big D like a dick. Um, <laughs> you would just go into the first of boo doo da -da of playing in the band. But also in that jam, you can drop to D minor in it, and you can go to Shakedown. There's there's a lot of stuff. You can go to China Doll. There's a lot of stuff you can do with playing in the band, and I love it for that. It's a great jam vehicle, and I will be I will be using that term a bit. Jam vehicle. Um, and then you've got like me and my uncle. Again, like I'm not a huge fan of the gay cowboy songs. Not there's anything. I love I love gay cowboys, and like Bob is a gay icon. You can't say that he's not. Bob Bob is here. Bob is here for the queers, and it's great. Uh, but these gay cowboy songs are not my favorite, and that's just that's just how it is. If you can't tell, um, and then you've got Warfrat, because I'm a Jerry boy. I'm a Jerry boy. The Jerry songs just connect with me. I love them. Just like you know, Warfrat has like a bunch of asterisks by it because that's one of my favorite songs. That is always in like my amorphous top ten or five. Uh, and then you've got Not Fade Away, Going Down the Road, Feeling Bad. Huge fan. Huge fan of those tunes. Um, you know, like Not Fade Away in particular. That's one of the best, like, ending chant songs that has ever existed. Especially the way that the dead did it. Um, and so, I... That, that's why it's hard with these these live albums. Because, like, they're, they're, they're all kind of interchangeable to me. Because there's so many different... Um, so many different instances in other live shows... That, that are just better. Um, but uh, that in itself might be a little divisive too. But whatever, whatever. We're moving on to our number 12. Probably still gonna upset you, so. <laughs> sorry. Not sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm not, I'm not sorry. You're gonna get that through this fucking video that I'm not fucking sorry. Okay, so with Shakedown Street, you've got a great good loving. I love it. I particularly love, and this was from 78, right? So I, you know, I particularly love the outtake of good loving that's sung by Lowell George because it's fucking incredible. For years, for years, my friend group and I, we thought that that was Keith. We thought it was Keith singing that good loving, and we were like, fuck yeah, Keith, you're totally making up for Let Me Sing Your Blues Away. No, it's Lowell George because he actually produced Shakedown Street. I don't know if you knew that or not, but it's a really cool little factoid. Um, so this song, of course, has Shakedown Street on it. I love that song. It's a great jam vehicle, right? And jam vehicle really just means a, a way for you to, like, really get out there and express yourself. There's so many points where you can just kind of, like, take it wherever, and you can play different songs within it. Jam vehicle, to me, just means that you're able to take it plenty of it, – it'll, it'll allow you to take place because you can get in and you can drive. You know, I love Staggerly. I love that song. 1940, X Missy with a full moon over town. It's almost like a Randy Newman song. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, the one thing I'm not a huge fan of is France. Now, I've said this a lot. Is it like the words to France are great? The music to France is incredible. Put them together, terrible. Terrible song. 
I don't know why. They wanted this song to be, they, they, they basically coined the term Yacht Rock for France. It, they wanted it to be the thing that really set them up and really, you know, put them on the map and really it was something that was like consumable, right? For, for the, you know, the, the regular people at the time. You know, because in 78, you got a bunch of disco um, and funk, and France just didn't do it the way they thought they were going to do it. You know, they were trying to do like a little river band thing. Friday night, it was late, I was walking you home, we got down to the gate. Night. That whole thing. You know, that's what they were going for, but it's not what happened. People were like, what, what the fuck is France? Um, and being someone who's had to play that song begrudgingly in a, in a band... Still not a, not a fan. Uh, but again, love the music to it. Music is fucking great. Um, and there's also a little honorable mention as if I had the world to give. And it's just one of those Sweet Jerry songs, you know? Like, not one of my favorites. Not one of my favorite Sweet Jerry songs. My favorite is probably Standing on the Moon. That's probably my favorite Sweet Jerry th song. Um, and that's about it for Shakedown. I'm sorry it's so low on the list. I mean, but it's just like the, the two songs on it that I really love are Shakedown and Stagger Lee. Like, I, Good Lovin's a great one, but they've been playing that since the 60s, you know? This was just, they just finally put it on an album. Probably because they needed to fill up space. <laughs> um, so now we're going to move on to our number 11. This one, I mean, like, this one seems, I don't know. This is just one of my preferences, right? All right, number 11 is the beauty. Go to heaven, baby. Look at them. Look at how majestic and how beautiful they are. Fucking uh, on the album art. It's fucking, they fucking nailed it. This is, that, this is that perfect balance of like taking yourself seriously but not too seriously because they had like, look at how fucking, like the outtake pictures are my favorite. Look at Phil. He's having a great time. <laughs> okay, so this album has like two of the, some great, greatest songs on there. Althea. It's a great one. It's a beautiful song. I love that song. It's fucking badass. But don't bounce, bounce, bounce. I, I love playing that song. Still don't know why it's a lot of people's favorite. Kind of get it, but like it's still like, I don't know. And then you've got Feel Like a Stranger. It's one of the sexiest songs ever written. It's a sexy fucking song. That's a fucking song. That's a getting it in song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And there's, there's also, you've got Lost Sailor, Saint the Circumstance, Antwerp's Placebo. Some, some great songs on there. Um, and I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Go to Heaven. I used to put that album on and just listen to it. And it's, it's a great album all the way through 1980, right? So it's like Jerry, Jerry was at his height, I think, from 75 to 81. I think that that was like, that, that chunk of time, Jerry is like on his shit. And that's why I'll always love that era. Um, so now we're going to move on to number 10, baby. Number 10. I know. I know. It's, work, it's Working Man's Dead. Probably, people are probably going to have something to say about that. How could you not put fucking American Beauty and Working Man's Dead is tied for number one? Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Get fucked. I don't, it's, it's to, to me, so, so Working Man's Dead and American Beauty are kind of interchangeable in these positions, honestly, so that might give you a little preview of what's next, but I, you know, this is like, they're, they're two Americana albums, they did it to recoup losses, they released both albums in 1970, like six months apart, because they needed to recoup losses, because Mickey Hart's dad ran off with all their fucking money, and they also, like, they were robbed, um, <coughs> robbed twice. But this this album has like high time, uh, high time, new speedway, and Black Peter are definitely my favorite songs on this album, and they be, just because they mean a lot to me. A lot, I know a lot of people love Uncle John's band. It's a it's a it's a great song. I, I again, this is that kind of era that's almost kind of like reminds me of the band a lot because it's that same kind of like displaced late eighteen hundreds in a different universe type thing. Um, so you've got Uncle John's band on there. You got Direwolf. Love that song. Don't fucking murder me. Jerry wrote that about the Zodiac Killer. Love that. <laughs> uh, you got Cumberland Blues on there and an Easy Win. Like another an, another one that like I feel like I should like more than I do, which is Cumberland Blues. And just like from someone who's had to play it, you know, it's like 
I don't know, man. It's not the most fun to play for me. And I know I, these are hot takes. People are probably going to judge me so harshly and not like me anymore after this. I'm so worried about what you guys think. I, t tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm pretty. T tell me I'm going to make it. Also, Easy Wind. I love that. That's a great pig pen song. It's a, one, of those, one of those great pig pen songs. Um, so now we're going to move on to number nine. Guess you bet you can't guess. Bet you can't guess what number nine is. That's right. It's American Beauty. Not the, no, not with, not with that guy. Not with that guy. Not that American Beauty. Because bad guy. Bad guy. So American Beauty is another Americana album. Same, same spiel as Working Man's Dead. Uh, but this one has Friend of the Devil on it. It's got Candyman, Broke Down Palace. Now, Friend of the Devil was the first dead song that ever fucking got me. It was like I, I was coming down off my first acid trip. I was 16 years, no, 15. I was 15 years old, and I just, I heard the intro. It was at Houston's house, and I heard the intro. The dun, 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 dun. But what got me was Phil's bass line. It was the... Doo -doo 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 and that will always be inside of me. That was what got me. I was like, What? That was fucking incredible, and then I was sold. Um, now, I love Candyman. I love Broke Down Palace. It's one of those perfect songs. Broke Down Palace, I will also be talking about the perfect songs. So, perfect song, Broke Down Palace. First one on the list that I found that's perfect. It's a perfect song. Perfect! You've also got Sugar Magnolia. I hate that song. I hate Sugar Magnolia. It's got one of the most boring choruses in the world. Uh, but I do love Sunshine Daydream. Tell me, tell me the reasoning behind that. Do not like Sugar Magnolia? Love Sunshine Daydream. Love it to death. I don't know. It's one of my favorites. Is that one part of that song? Uh, you've also got Ripple on there, which we, you know, I, you might get upset, but it, it's it's also one of those perfect songs. But I still think Broke Down's better than that. Um, and then you've got Truckin', which is another one of those incredible jam vehicles. Just. It just, it gets the job done, right? It's like you're, you're able to go. I, my, my band Chance in the Void, we just recently did a sandwich of, we did trucking into the other one, back into trucking, into the other one, into Dark Star, back into the other one, back into Dark Star, and then finished off trucking. It was dumb, but it was cool. It was cool as fuck. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot you can do with that song. And the fact that they put it on an album is crazy to me, but they did. And it's a good, it's a good album. Again, like, I'm sorry if you guys wanted me to gush more over it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that like, but to me, it's like the working man's dead and American beauty. They're like, they're some of the most well-known songs and that's not a bad thing. They're, they're great songs. They're, they're timeless songs, but to me, they're some of the most played out songs. Like, some of these songs are like how you test people. It's like, all right, what's your favorite dead song? If they come at you with anything off of American Beauty and Working Man's Dead, they're not your deadheads, which is very judgmental of me and very mean. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. It's my video. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Now we're moving on to number eight, baby. All right, so now we're kind of like coming back around to the psychedelia. We're at Live Dead, right? So this is hard dick psychedelia. This is like this is like going for the throat. Like they are so aggressive, and I love it. It's aggressive. It's punchy. It's almost like fucking metal and punk. Um, so you've got Dark Star on there, which is like one of the most perfect jam vehicles. Um, it's just A to G, baby. There's so much you can do to A to G, and that drop down is to E minor before you come back with the main theme, so you can do a lot with it. You can do a lot with it. You can do a song in E minor, you can modulate to E major, go to something from there, drop back down to E minor, do the lick, and then you're back in Dark Star. Then you can do something in A, or you can drop down to G. It's really cool. There's a lot you can do with it. It's super jazzy. You've got St. Stephen into the 11, which is one of those uh, perfect pairings. It's one of those perfect pairings. I love it. And this is the one where they had, I believe, the William Tell, the William Tell verses in there that they got rid of because they probably, you know, they could never really get it right. It's like, wasn't the easiest to sing. Now, you've also got uh, Love Light on there. Love Light is one of those, one of those, it's probably my favorite Pigpen song. 
is probably what I would consider the best Pigpen song is Love Life. Uh, there's just like when he would do those raps in it, love it. Uh, not a huge fan of when he would do his little raps in Good Morning Little School Girl. We'll talk about that a little bit. It's wrong. Wrong. Don't do that. And then we've got We Bid You Good Night, which is very sweet. And it's one of those one of those things that will like hit you right in the heart, hit you right in the feels. And for me, it's like when, when I play this music, I'm trying to come with the most balls, right? I'm just trying to come with the hardest dick and the most balls. I'm sorry if this offends you, but this is, this is real life. Like, people don't want to fucking listen to you if you're doing, like, a karaoke version of the song, you know? It's like, yeah, they'll, they'll come see the show, but they're not going to, like, they're not going to follow you around. They're not going to really give a fuck. You got to kind of, you got to come with the heat. You know what I mean? You got to, like, feel the heat from the crotch of the music, right? Feel the heat from the crotch. It's boiling down there. It's muggy. It's a little sticky. And and so that's 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 why this album connects a lot with me because it's like it, it I try to take this this kind of approach to the rest of the catalog, right? I try to take what they were doing around this area because I'm I'm a little rough around the edges, right? Like I'm not school I'm not school learned. I am not book learned. I'm not school taught, book taught. I taught myself how to do all of this stuff. So it's like even the way to plug for the Golden Road Guitar Course, um, if you want to know how I do it. Because uh, I didn't get, learn it, I taught to myself, and I feel like I should teach it to other people for money. I don't know. I don't know. We're out here just trying to make a living, right? Nobody knows why we exist. We're just trying to figure it out. So that's why I love that it came out in '69, the year before they they went all, you know, they they went to the Americana route. And uh, another cool thing about American Beauty and Workman is that they they worked with Crosby and Nash, I think. On, I mean, it was Crosby, Stills and Nash, but like that, be, in exchange for Jerry doing some guitar and pedal steel on one of their albums, they helped them with the the um, they helped them with the harmonies on those two albums, which I thought was really cool. Uh, and you can really tell that their vocals got a lot better after that. But anyways, now we're going to move on to number seven. We're cracking down this list, baby, and it's only been like half an hour. <laughs> Hasn't this just flown by? Just flying right by, just zooming past your face. Um, so number seven. Number seven is Anthem of the Sun. It is what, what I would call... I would call this primordial psychedelia. That's what I would call it because it is, it's primal, it's dirty, it's fucking dark. You know, I still feel like they're trying to like summon something, right? So you've got, that's it for the other one on there, which is like, that's it for the other one. So it's got the other one and cryptical envelopment in it. And cryptical envelopment had led me to one of the most potent DMT trips I've ever had in my fucking life, um, especially with the, you know, he has to die. That'll fuck you up, man. It'll fuck you up. You feel like you won't come back. Um, and then you've also got um, you, you've also got Alligator on there. I love that song. I love Alligator. Caution, do not step on the tracks. This whole album just flows into itself. New Potato Caboose, Born Cross-Eyed. They're just they're just it's it's a it's one of those perfect albums. It is you can just put it on and let it run. Boom! It sits right behind me too. It's one of the best album arts there is too. You see that? You see that right there? Thank you, Clarky. Thank you, little baby boy. He kicked that down to me a long time ago, and I, I love him for it. It still sounds great, too. I have a, I bought a record player just to listen to it, and I love it. Um, so just, like, smoke yourself a joint, turn on Anthem of the Sun, and feel weird, baby. Just get out there and feel weird. They, they had such a weird way of recording that one, too. It's, like, different recordings of different shows on top of each other played at the same time. It's, it's fucking intense. Um, just like hippie sex, you know what I'm saying? Hey. So now we are going to move on to number six. We're almost to the top five. We're almost to the top five of Davey's albums. Davey's favorite dead albums. Not yours. You put yours in the comments. You don't get mad at me for mine. Okay? Okay. Number six. Number six is Reckoning, baby. Reckoning. And it is, to me, this is one of the best acoustic albums ever recorded ever just ever 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 it's it's one of those perfect albums so you've got songs on there like that dire wolf uh, chef's kiss it must have been the roses rip your heart out of your chest put it on the table save it for later it's gonna make you cry the china doll is gonna like if you just want to weep put on reckoning just just put on reckoning and feel the catharsis feel 
Feel your feelings for once in your godforsaken life, you fucking callous bastard. Cry. Cry. Am I talking to myself? Of course. <laughs> um, you got a, an amazing child doll. Been all around this world. Jack Arrow, Cassidy, um, to lay me down. Again, rip your heart out. Fucking die. Bird song. Rip that, and this is the perfect ripple. Like, the album version, great, but this is the perfect ripple. It's one of the most perfect bird songs. Like, the, again, the To Lay Me Down, it's over. Game over. Game over for me, man. Woo. And that is why Reckoning comes in from, and Reckoning from 81 comes in at number six. That's why. Because it's, it, again, like, I, I come from the acoustic roots. Um, Toby and I had, like, a little, like, uh, acoustic guitar duo for a long time. We were called Headspace. And we did a lot of stuff that was, you know, the, a lot of the stuff we wrote was very reminiscent of that Reckoning album and also, you know, Working Man and American Beauty. Um, but that's neither here nor there. You don't, I mean, you might care about me. Do you care about me? If you care about me, buy the Golden Road Guitar Course. Do it. Or just like fucking go join the Patreon or throw some money at me because I'm living in my grandma's basement now. Shit got weird. Divorce is weird. Love you. All right, moving on to number five, baby. We're in the top five now. We're closing in on it, okay? So here we go, number five. All right, baby girl. Coming in at number five is the self-titled debut album, Grateful Dead. Not The Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead. The name of this band is Grateful Dead. <laughs> so, like, the biggest thing to talk about on this one is the first song on their first album is called The Golden Road to Unlimited Devotion. Now, I, I covered this in the lesson I did on it, right? But this song is fucking witchcraft. They did it. They did it right. I don't know how, but, like, whatever the juju they put into that song fucking worked. The Golden Road to Unlimited Devotion. What happened? What fucking happened? Uh, the, these songs are the new standards, right? The, the Grateful Dead's catalog is the, are the new standards. Get out of here, Woody. Be a good kitty. Go on, go fuck my stuff up. But anyways, witchcraft. He got up here to stop me from talking about it because he's my familiar. You know what I'm saying? But I definitely think there's there's some kind of witchcraft going on with this song. I've always thought that it just makes too much sense. Uh, now you've got Cold Rain and Snow on there. You've got some songs on there that are fucking staples, right? Cold Rain and Snow, Morning Dew, and Viola Lee Blues was a great jam vehicle back in the day. I think more bands need to bring it back and play it more because it's a great song to kind of like bookend other tunes. Um, Morning Dew is just a fucking banger. Morning Dew has always been a banger, will always be a banger. Scream it at the top of your lungs. The best song about nuclear fallout that I, you know, a nuclear holocaust that I've ever heard. Um, so, but then you've got songs like Cream Puff War, which is just a badass rock song. So this album in itself from 67 is just, it's surf rock, basically. It's surf rock roots, almost. Um, but then you've got um, Good Morning Little Schoolgirl. It's not okay. That song is not okay. You can't play that song anymore. Just don't do it. It's a pedophilic song. Just going to call it out straight up. It's not okay. It's a creepy fucking song. If you like that song, maybe you're a creep. Just say it. It's not okay. It's not okay for a 45-year-old man or even older. Or even younger. Just don't sing the song. Just don't sing the song. Just don't do it. It's not a good song. It's not a good song for you. It might be a banger. But it's about banging a kid. So, don't. Just don't. That's bad. That's bad. So, we're going to act like that song doesn't exist. Okay? We're just going to act like it's not it's, it's not a thing anymore. All right? So, moving on to number four, baby. Now now we're kind of in the, the, the realm where I don't know if I'm going to start making people angry. Uh, if you're not already angry with me, don't be angry with me. Again, just my opinion. It doesn't matter. I don't matter. I don't matter. But maybe number four does. Here, here we go. All right, it's not a bad choice for number four, right? Blues for Allah. One of my, one of my, obviously one of my all-time favies. 
right? So Blues for All at 1975. Of course, you've got the Help Slip Frank, one of the best, one of the best string of songs ever. And this is where shit gets weird. This was the cocaine era, right? So it's all the notes real fucking fast, right? And so you've also got Music Never Stopped. There's a great jam vehicle, and it's also an, an, one of those perfect songs. Uh, Crazy Fingers, Mwah, it's a beautiful song, beautiful reggae song. They always did reggae really weird, but Jerry loved reggae. I see fucking Road Jimmy, <laughs> see, uh, you know, the songs from Jerry Band. You got uh, Harder They Come, Stir It Up, uh, fucking Sitting in Limbo, Just great tunes. Um, the, you know, Fire on the Mountain is kind of a reggae song. Um, and then you've also got Blues for All, which was what I talked about earlier. This was kind of the, the, the logical next step. We doing pills, uppers and downers. They're the logical next step for you. I want some of that shit. For, for their weird shit. And it's like a 15 minute song of just like some noise and some vocals. Um, fucking under eternity. That'll stick with you. Got King Solomon's Marbles on there. It's just, it's it's a great album. You can just put it on and let it go. And that's that's what you're really kind of looking for, right? Is like the overall experience of the album itself, at least for me. So Blues for Allah, that's why it comes in number four, because it's a, the these next, these four are perfect albums to me. They're, they're albums that you can just put on and let them go. Um, so Blues for Allah, definitely a solid number four. I love it. Look at that album art. It's just fucking incredible. It is so good. Um, so now we're going to move on to number three. Bow. Coming in at number three, you've got the Mars Hotel. From the Mars Hotel. Sorry. One of my favorite album arts ever. Fucking incredible. Love the back. Love, love these creatures. The aliens that they turned everybody into. I love it. So you've got U.S. Blues on there. you got China Doll. Unbroken Chain. What the fuck is that song? That song's badass. And this is 74, so this is the year before Blues for Allah. So you can kind of see the, the the beginnings of Blues for Allah in Unbroken Chain. You can kind of see where they're trying to get out there and get a little bit more syncopated, do stuff that's a little bit more orchestrated, right? So uh, uh, Loose Lucy's on there. Love that weird, the, the weird time signature that it's in on there. Scarlet Begonias is on there. Um, there's, there's this particular palm muting in the album version of Scarlet Begonias that has always been stuck in my head, and I love it. Um, you got Money Money on there, which is one of my all-time favorite Bob songs for some reason. I don't know. A lot of people hate that song. I love Money Money. I just, it's got attitude. I like that attitude. Uh, Ship of Fools, perfect song. Perfect song. Probably, probably definitely in my top three favorite Grateful Dead songs ever is Ship of Fools. Um, just because it, it, it again, it, it hits you in the heart and it rips it out and it turns your brain into mush because it's just, it's fucking perfect. It's about not getting caught up in the bullshit, right? Not getting caught up in what other people are saying. Don't be, don't lend your hand to raise a flag atop a ship of fools. Don't do that. Don't do that. And there's also Pride of Cucamonga. Pride of Cucamonga is fun. Whoa, oh, it's the Pride of Cucamonga. It's good. It's fun. It's a fun little goofy song. Don't. It's a fun little little goof about, little goofy goober. I like that one. Um, and yeah, again, like I can just put this album on and just bliss out because I. It's just a, it's just one of those. It's a perfect thing. It seemed like they stopped, you know, at a certain point, especially with like in the dark and built to last, and even into um, maybe even like Shakedown Street where they're putting no go to heaven. They're just kind of filling songs on the album instead of like writing the songs to fit the album right like conceptualizing the album um so that's why from the mars hotel gets number three it's really because of ship of fools because <laughs> that song means a lot to me and china doll those songs both mean a, a lot to me um now we're in our number two and number one spot i don't think that you're gonna guess which is which <laughs> so here we go with number two rage don't rage at me because i put terrapin as number two now terrapin it's a solid number two you know what i mean um so my songs on terrapin of course you you got estimated love that song everybody loves that song it's a great song it's fucking raucous it's badass <laughs> sexy sexy as fuck right and then you've got passenger just rocking um, Samson and Delilah, great tune. 
Great fucking tune. The the song for Terrapin Station is Terrapin Station. It is their opus. Um, it is... It, if you were ever going to like... I don't know, man. It's, it is, it's one of the most perfect songs ever written. And it's also just... It's fucking incredible. I don't I don't know what else to say about it. it's fucking incredible the way it was produced. It's incredible the 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 amount of detail that went into it. It is it is so composed. It is perfect. It is perfect. Um and it it still blows my mind. I've been listening to it for half of my life now. I've been playing it for, you know, uh, about that amount of time and it still amazes me. Every time that I play it or listen to it, it's just, it's it's incredible. The story is beautiful. The way that it falls apart as you get into Add a Sighting. The story behind the writing of the song. Jerry and ba, or Robert Hunter both wrote their parts on the same night, a distance away from each other, and then brought, brought the lyrics and the music to each other the next day, and they fit perfectly. Um, I just, I think it's, it's just... I don't really know what else to say about that. It's just, it's, it's perfect. Um, and that's why it's at number two. Now, number one, I, I mean, I guess you probably guessed it by now, but here we go. And number one, Wake of the Flood, baby. Hit fucking hit the confetti. Say congratulations. The fucking, those, those fucking things, whatever they do and whatever they are. Um, Wake of the Flood is... It's perfect. It is the perfect album. It's perfect. It's perfect. You can't you can't not say it. You can put you can put it on and let it go. Hop in the hap and turn on the key. Push in the button, let the wheels roll free. Hop pop in the clutch, let the wheels roll free. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, so so the, the album has half step. It's got Road Jimmy, Stella Blue, Here Comes Sunshine, Eyes of the World, Weather Report, dude. It's it's it is it, it's inc it, I don't know it's just why do I keep saying perfect it's it, nothing is perfect but it's perfect like it, like the album art down to the song placement it is just it flows so well it is I if I had to pick one of these albums to be stuck on a desert island with it's gonna be wake of the flood just because like across the the Rio Grandio across the lazy river you fucking road Jimmy come on Stella Blue. Stella Blue is, if if there could only be one song on the planet, and Stella Blue is not even my favorite Grateful Dead song, but Stella Blue would be the perfect only song because it is it is life. Stella Blue is just a microcosm of life. It is an oversimplification of what life is, and I I can't get over it. And Weather Report, sweet dude, what the fuck even is that song? It's so cool. Weather Report, sweet is so cool. It is the best. It is it is. It's Bob's opus, right? Weather Report Suite, I think, is Bob's opus. Eyes of the World, you kidding me? It's just, that it's just, it's absolutely insane. It's absolutely perfect. And so that's my, that's my official, Davey's official ring. I had six pages of notes. Six pages of notes to get through. That is Davey's, Davey's verdict. Whatever that's worth. It's worth nothing. Hopefully some views. <laughs> that would be cool. Um... And now we're going to get into ranking the art, right? And this will kind of go a little bit faster. Okay, so we're starting off with our number number 17 for our albums. Uh, we're going to go with In the Dark. I just, you know, I, I, I think it's cool, but it's just their eyes and a dark background. It's just this. what it is that's that's it so i you know it's not it's not my fave uh number 16 is europe 72 i just like you guys are gonna hate me for how much i'm <laughs> i'm not even hating on europe 72 but it's like you know the the fucking the, the 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 dude with the rainbow afro sticking the sticking the the ice cream cone on his head you know i know that they had like a different one of those kind of like illustrations in that same style for every one of those shows that was in europe but again, like it's it's never been one of my favorites, and it's also like one of the most played out images. I think that and the dead bears are like to me how you spot spot trash. <laughs> um, so Europe seventy two is number sixteen. Number fifteen, we got Working Man's Dead. Now you can be upset if you want, but we're literally going by the art on the album. 
and I think that like this one, I love the old timey picture. I love it, but to me, it's it's you know, it it is what it is. it's a picture of them. I like the ones that have like the actual art in it. Not that this pit photo is an art. It's just like it definitely conveys what the album is about, and that's really cool. But it's just going in the 15 spot for me. 14 is reckoning. I love this. I love this little piece of art. I love that you've got the skull and the crossbones, the heart in there because it's it's heartfelt. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful album. It's so pretty. It's so good. And I love like the text that they have for the the Grateful Dead, and then you've got the GD, and it's it's just great. Um, number thirteen, you've got American Beauty. I've always loved that rose because that's iconic imagery with the dead is that rose. But the just this album art in particular is it, it's it's almost ubiquitous with the Grateful Dead. You've got the rose. You've got that like wood grain behind it. Beautiful. Uh, number twelve, we're going uh, with Built to Last. And I, I really enjoy this album art just because you've got everybody around this house of cards. I've always loved the imagery of a house of cards. I even wrote a song when I was younger called House of Cards. And like the tagline was, it was this house of cards is bound to fall. And I, I've always loved it. Um, and it's based on this uh, this album art. I love that they're just all kind of like putting cards on the putting cards on the thing. I don't know. Is it going to fall? Is it, gonna, is it built to last? Um, so that's why that's at number 12. Number 11 is Oxamaxua. <laughs> Oxamaxa. That's how it's spelled. Um, or that's how it's said. I really enjoy this one. Again, this is one of those ones that's kind of ubiquitous. Like a lot of people they'll they'll put this up as the as the you know as as the artwork for it. It's very psychedelic. You've got the um even though the Oxamaxua is the Oxamaxa is like the eye, the eye with the feet. Um but I love like the the psychedelic roots and the skull and crossbones. It's it's really good. Uh, next, you've got Live Dead, just because like I love the way that they've got. Again, this is that Canterbury Tales shit. You got the lady that's on like in the coffin, and she's holding up the scroll. The scroll is coming off of her, um, and yeah, so she's the Live Dead. She's you know the dead is alive. That kind of thing. Zombies, all that shit. Um, Shakedown Street. It's great album artwork. It's it's almost kind of like that um, that crumb kind of style of of art, and you know it's like that dirty gritty, and that's kind of like the idea of Shakedown Street is that it's I mean like you got the shakedowns at the at the shows and stuff, but like really what this Shakedown Street is, it's like it's it used to be the heart of town, right? So it's a little it's a little run down. I've always liked that. I like the dirty side of stuff. I'm rough and tumble, you know. I, I lived on the streets for a long time. I was homeless for a long time. Um, next, number eight, you've got Go to Heaven. Look at them. Again, they're having so much fun. I love it. It's it's perfect. It's, it's a perfect album cover. Um, number seven, you got Terrapin just because of what it is. Again, it's very simple art, but it's uh, it's that, you know, the, the turtle playing the banjo and the turtle playing the tambourine. That's iconic imagery. Um... And it's it it helps to give a little bit of an idea of what you're in for almost. It's it's a it's a rendering of what a Terrapin Station would be. In my mind, it's a little different. And in the comic books, it was really interesting too because Terrapin Station was a space station. Think about that. Uh, number six, you've got Mars Hotel. Again, it's it's one of my favorites. I I love the colors used. I love the contrast of it. I really love the back of the album where you've got those guys chilling on that giant couch. Um, Number five, you've got the 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 awesome collage of the first album, Grateful Dead. That's coming in at number five, and it's it's really cool. You've got that kind of like demon bursting out of the egg. You've got you know little young Bob. You've got two Phils. Um, you've got two Jerry's. You got two pig pens. You got one Billy, just one Billy. <laughs> but I've I've always enjoyed that that it itself is just psychedelic. It's just a psychedelic collage. And it's fun. It actually inspired me to do a collage for one of Shabti's uh, EPs. And uh, if I've got it, that's that's what it looks like. And I thought that was really cool. So it's very inspiring. Um, number four, you got Skull and Roses, just because you got Bertha on there. It, that's like that's uh, you know you've got you've got the the skeleton with the roses on her head, Bertha. Um, and that's just again more iconic imagery. Some of the more iconic imagery that I enjoy. I love I love that that image. Uh, number three, you've got motherfucking Anthem of the Sun. It's the one I got back there. It's so cool. It's just this mandala of them coming off of this god or demon as different heads, this almost hydra 
beast, this almost like uh, Hindi, Hydra, fucking ancient Japanese. It's crazy, and I and it's perfect to me. Um, number two, you've got Blues for Allah. I love this guy. Look, at th this is this is incredible. It's metal as fuck. It's it gives the whole vibe ancient, ancient tomb almost right, and and uh, it's just it's so good. It's so fucking good. Just look at it for a second. Ugh. Um, and then number one again. Number one, the winner is fucking. It's it's Wake of the Flood. It's it, again. It matches the tone of the album perfectly. It it's the 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 imagery. It matches the music. There's no there's 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 no difference between it. As as soon as you start to listen to it, they they both evoke each other, right? The image evokes the music. The music evokes the image, and that's why for me they they come in at number one both times. And again, this is all me, right? This is all me. This is just coming from my fucked up brain. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. Thank you for sticking around. If you've made it this far, please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all the stuff you're supposed to do. Again, comment your list below. Let me know what you think for both, for the art and for your actual album listing, right? Uh, please go buy the Golden Road Guitar Course. Join our Patreon, right? Go buy some merch at realbird.company.site. I'll be doing more videos kind of like this, ranking. I would love to do more list videos kind of almost. Um, that would be kind of cool. Uh, let me know what you would like if I if you wanted me to do Jerry's guitars, Bob's guitars, um, like the top ten Jerry songs, top ten Bob songs, what whatever you think would be interesting. Let let me know because um, lessons are still coming. But I, I you know you want to branch out, you know do something a little bit less niche, right? So you can kind of bring in more people. Um, also times are hard again. Living in my grandma's basement, divorced, boom. You want to just throw some some money to old Davy so he can pay his car payment and you know find another place to live that would be cool <laughs> but anyways i love you thank you for everything because again you guys make all of this possible i can't do it without you i love you with all my heart you guys give me a job and i get to do what i love i get to make funny little stupid videos for your entertainment and that's what i love to do i love to serve you know what i'm saying so um do all the stuff you're supposed to do and just remember that don't be a dick it's the main rule. Just don't be a dick, okay? So, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one, baby. Mm -hmm.